Oh, excellent. Excellent. Okay, we're going to begin. Thank you so much for coming. Um, before I forget, uh, any questions you have about certification, please see the uh, folks outside the door um, at the table. And uh, please turn off your cell phones if you have them. And if you must make a call or receive a call that you must answer, please go outside into the, into the hall. Um, thank you so much for coming. This is a great turnout, as I knew it would be. Um, we're here to talk to one of the world's great designers. Uh, and, uh, but before we begin, I want to give great thanks to Walters, formerly Walters Wicker, for their sponsorship of this event and their support throughout the years. So please thank them for me. <laughs> Walters uh, President Ken Schindler is in the back. Um, and there, no, I'm sorry, now he's in the front. OK. <laughs> thank you very much, Ken. Uh, and we are also sitting in canasta chairs from B&B &B Italia. <laughs> like them, huh? Nice, yeah. Well, so far it's a nice, nice B&B. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, all right, we're not going to spend a lot of time introducing him because in a way he doesn't need an introduction. Um, we were just talking and I was asking him uh, if he had, uh, has properties in uh, every continent of the world except for Antarctica. So when's that coming? <laughs> <laughs> wow, I'm afraid of coal. <laughs> <laughs> Good reason to stay away. <laughs> Um, literally, though, he has made uh, project after project of incredible designs that inspire us and amaze us, and um, he has done so with great gr grace. He doesn't make many personal appearances, so we are doubly happy that he's here today. So please welcome Tony Chi. So let's just begin with your childhood and, and where, where you were born, where you were raised, and um, Anything you, we should know about little Tony Chi? <laughs> uh -huh. well, I'm still little. I'm, I'm young in heart. Uh, first of all, I want, I want to thank everyone's participation. I want to thank everyone travel near, travel far. Uh, and I believe this is the heaven. Thank you very much for coming. And of course, all my friends and Rogers and, and Rachel, thank you. And Laura, Bob. Uh, I'm a very fortunate fella. And I, you know, I was fortunate given the opportunity by the American uh, come to this country in the 60s. Um, I won't be here if it really wasn't uh, the American effort. Um, the freedom, the education, uh, the exposure, uh, the opportunity. Uh, to me it was a one big merry-go-round and I saw the golden brass ring and I took it. Uh, Design was something that I never knew. And you know, we're just somehow growing up in New York. Uh, New York is always like a huge design studio. Everywhere you go, you see design. So for my childhood growing up in New York, predominantly on the street, uh, see things and sort of uh, <clears throat> open up my, my palate a bit, uh, but never realized that. Uh, where uh, I saw, uh, this is back in the 60s, and I saw uh, privileged children go to summer camp. Uh, we go down to 10th Street. Uh, you know, it, it was a, uh, it is still mind-boggling in my mind uh, that, that people talk about, oh, the kids go to summer camp because I never had that experience. And I'm glad I didn't because the experience that I have had uh, with the people on the street, uh, the people in my neighborhood, or the people in New York, really I have learned everything from it. Um, and I, I can't deny that. Um, of course, growing up uh, in New York and continue with this sort of um, public school system also taught me quite a bit. Uh, it really is about being average, the concept of being average. Uh, and what does it mean, being good enough or not good enough? Uh, what is the benchmark for averageness? Uh, it's a lot to think of it, you know, and I think the public school that I learned the averageness is all defined by the individual. Uh, and I learned a lot from there, too. All the years that I, that I practiced design, you know, I learned the most are from the people, people like yourself, the people that I work with, uh, the people from the editorial. Uh, you know, this constant critique uh, of your work. Uh, and it's not necessarily the critique that they're giving you, it's rather the awareness uh, they pose upon you uh, that makes you think about and reflect the design a bit. Uh, nowadays, 
you know, I'm sitting in the B&B chair, I do the R&R, &R, uh, that is to recollect and reflect, and I constantly do that. And, you know, am I good enough? I'm far from it. You know, and I think people say designer or the architects, we're the late bloomer, how true. Um, you know, you, you're still learning, you're still growing. Uh, I learn from my colleague and I learn from the job that I do, and then I never regret what, what I do. You know, I mean, I, I'm fearless, I can make a mistake, I can go on uh, with uh, the next project. So every project to me is a good project. But foremost, uh, to me, it is not about the project. Uh, rather, it's about the faces. Uh, I love to connect the dots. Uh, you know, design is all about connecting the dots, but fundamentally, it's about the people. We need to connect that dot uh, with Michael for 32 years now. I have no Michael. He hasn't changed one bit. He's always this good looking. You know, I lost my hair. He's kept, he kept his. <laughs> <laughs> Next time when you get a haircut, give me a call. I'll catch some. <laughs> uh, you know, for 30 some years, and we're still sitting here. Isn't that beautiful, Rachel? For 30 years, we're sitting here. Is that beautiful? And my lovely wife, we've been married since 27 years. And we're still sitting here. So the concept uh, of not dealing with disposable is a good thing. Friendship go through accumulation, uh, learning go through accumulation. And I think this is basically what uh, this industry has taught us. Uh, why are we in the hospitality industry? Um, you know, it's quite obvious. It is about we connected the, the dot. Uh, that relationship kept us going. Today, uh, you know, to, to prolong this answer to your question, um, I remember very well that I left uh, United States when uh, seeking work internationally. Uh, what inspired me at the time really was not the economic issue, but rather I find the design formula was a bit too narrow for me at the time. I felt that I wasn't learning anymore. I felt that I was, I was forced into a formula applied into design, uh, and I didn't quite like it. So I went out there <clears throat> to look for different options. And of course, Asia was the most obvious place for me to be. At the time, they didn't have a formula. You know, anything goes. Uh, so, so you learn a great deal of uh, the scientific side of design. And that allowed myself through time uh, to practice the artistic side of things. And today, I'm still not able to create that equilibrium, trust me. I'm, I'm, I'm juggling between the scientific side and artistic side constantly. Uh, I'm glad to be home. I'm glad to be back. Uh, I'm glad to be among the, the American hospitality industry. Uh, I think this is basically the heart and soul of the hospitality industry. Uh, you know, hospitality, in fact, this started um, scientifically from here. Um, you know, in the old days, remember the restaurant institution. Do you remember the restaurant design? Today, it's hospitality design. These magazines uh, back in the 70s promoted this industry. Uh, if it wasn't, uh, you think we'll be here? Do you really think that there is a field to call hospitality? And what does that mean? Uh, such a simple word, but such a broad base. Uh, it taught us uh, the basic understanding of um, hospitable manner uh, that promoted by this country. Of course, the rest of the world caught up. Uh, now look at the design around the world. Um, more or less, uh, they are using uh, the American uh, formulated scientific base uh, as a beginning point. So I'm, I'm kind of glad to be back. <laughs> <laughs> so are we. Uh, well, to reel back just a little, uh, you mentioned the summer camp. Is that where you learned that you had some sort of artistic talent? I never went to summer camp. I admire kids that go to summer oh. camp. Uh, the only thing that I went to, I, I did during the summer was, uh, I don't know, I mean, working. Uh, we didn't have any lawn to mow in New York City. It's a concrete jungle. I mean, we did delivery, we did, I mean, we did the street life. You did I mean, I, we did a lot. I used to work for a butcher shop to deliver. Uh, deliver meat that the people order, uh, you know, from house to house. I think New York City living was, was great. Uh, you know, you get to know your neighborhood, you get to know the neighborhood, you get to know um, 
who lives in which building, how people vertically stack, uh, playing stickball on the street, uh, air condition is not a common thing, so learn to play with the fire hydrant, uh, learn to ride on the back of the buses, uh, I mean, actually the back of the buses. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I don't regret that at all. I, yeah. I, think, I think that's, a, that's one thing great about growing up in New York. But where did you notice that you had talent? I did. You never I still did? don't. Where did, where, did, where, did, where did somebody notice you had talent? Uh, you? <laughs> well, I didn't know you then. Well, well actually, you know, uh, I remember when I was in junior high school at the time that we had this sort of an art, um, uh, art class uh, that often we have to do posters. Uh, and I was used to be a, such a hustler, and I used to do, draw these GTO Le Mans 442, this hard rock car for 25 cents. And I, I, made, I draw them very quickly, and I sell them for 25 cents. That was my spending money. So my teacher said, you know, why don't you work with us? I do, the, do the school decoration in junior high school. I went to junior high school 17. I'm 47 and 8 in the heart of Times Square. It doesn't get better than that. And, uh, and, and I remember at the, uh, as a seventh grade, and she said, you know, you really should go to high school of art and design. It's a, it's a school um, that takes gifted uh, artistic children. And said, why don't you try it? So I, I went there, I applied for it, and I got in at the ninth grade. Uh, from there, sort of paved the road to say, you know, this is pretty cool. And, you know, we didn't have to take uh, history classes. We didn't have to take biology. I mean, it was limited. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it was, it was all about our studio, six hours. You can, you can, you can actually... Uh, um, you can actually have fun for lunch, and then you know, get all wasted in the little classroom, uh, and, and then hang out for the rest of the day. It was great, and the music, uh, between the music, between the uh, the painting, I don't know, of course, wonderful girls and all that, it's fantastic. So <laughs> art, art design basically opened up my eyes a bit. <laughs> So this was a career for you then? Oh, absolutely. This is, yeah. this is exactly where I like to be. <laughs> <laughs> and then where did, where's your formal study? Uh, after art and design, uh, of course, at the time, there were uh, many universities came to solicit students. Of course, the school that I really wanted to go was one of the, uh, the top school, uh, Rice University out of Houston. Uh, and I couldn't make it out there. I was just so far away. And of course, my parents weren't. Uh, quite qualified to take me out to the school. So I never made it to Rice. Uh, then Notre Dame was my second choice. Um, then, of course, RISD, and I also want to go there, but unfortunately it was all private and I couldn't, just could not afford it. So I wind up um, uh, applying for State University. Um, fortunately, I got into uh, CCNY, we call it poor man's Harvard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I studied urban planning there. Then from there, I studied architecture. And from thereafter, I went to FIT, uh, study interior design. And I thought from scale that I've learned, from scale 1 to 1,000 down to 1 to 100 and down to 1 to 20. Uh, and I learned that scale, then I, I am most comfortable with that 1 to 1 or 1 to 20 scale. Uh, this large thing somehow does not entice me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and after school, I, during school, during the architecture school or the interior design school, were, was hospitality the option you were considering, or did that, did you fall into that somehow? You know, no idea. In those days, school really, uh, in those days, it really didn't focus on a, a very special area, not necessarily say, well, here's a mercantile, here's an institution, and here's a hospitality. Uh, it was not defined that way. Mm -hmm. uh, I sort of uh, learned that. Um, through a, a, a wonderful gentleman who passed away. His name was Charles Mount, and some of you may know him. And Charles was an all-American uh, architect from uh, Alabama, uh, real southern gentleman. He never wears a tie. He wears a bow tie. He's got a mustache that curls up, uh, all white. And he actually had a small little kitchen in his studio. And he asked me one day to say, oh, you know, I need some extra hand to help me do some drafting work. I said, yeah, sure, I'll come up. And that was back in the uh, 78, 79, and I believe. And uh, often enough, he said, okay, you do the drafting, I'll do the cooking, what do you want for lunch? Uh, you know, that kind of thing. I said, oh, this is pretty cool, I like this. <laughs> uh, then from, from uh, hanging out for a couple of days a week became a couple of years. Uh, from there, I think Charles told me about my senses. 
uh, somehow he, talk, he talks about design quite a bit. It's always using other senses to platform the design. You know the thing that I never realized that I have? You know, there's the smell, the touches, or what I see, or what I, what I hear. And, 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 and he says, uh, hospitality, it is about that total symphony. And I, and I still reminisce that to this day. I mean, listen, I won't be here if it wasn't Charles. And, and I, thought, I thought that he always says, you know, Tony, you're, you're, you're a pretty good designer, but you need to stay focused. Mm. Uh, and I took that to heart, and I stayed focused on hospitality work. Then I realized <clears throat> truly what I was uh, trained to do uh, was public places. Uh, I was never very good doing private homes. I said, gee, being, being a private servant, oh, that's tough. You know, ouch. <laughs> you know, I, I did some home. Uh, God, how many wives I have gone through? Uh, you know, and, <laughs> and changing client halfway through the project. Oh, my. Uh, but, but doing public places, it's actually being very democratic, but yet being, being very superior, being, being the upper end of the averageness. Uh, you know, it's not controversial. It's something that we can bring all of us together. It is a common ground. Uh, and I find hospitality uh, is the place to be. You know, you think of it, you know, <clears throat> how many times do you eat a day? I mean, minimum we do have three meals a day, but in South America, now my wife and I live in South America, 